You too, Bozik. Go in the Godows is back with a preview and things to watch for the LA Rams. We are doing this for every NFL team. We have a playlist on the channel with the teams that we have already done. Check it out. Make sure to comment which team I should do next. To the LA Rams, three things uh, that you should watch. Maybe some things that people aren't really talking about enough. They completely revamped their secondary, and that's definitely going to help them because. I thought maybe that was their biggest weak point of the team last year, especially how things ended, looking at that battle against the Lions in the playoff game. From the beginning, it was kind of back and forth, explosive plays from the offenses and, and scoring. Uh, and a lot of the problem from the Rams' defensive struggles in that was the secondary just giving up too easy of completions, you know, giving up a big cushion and just giving up, again, easy receptions, easy completions, and, uh, that that really needed to change. They needed guys that were just all around better, but guys that could possibly press and just have a little bit more to their game. Uh, and they did that. And I feel like people really aren't talking about how they, every starter actually could be different. There might be like one or two, you know, Kobe Durant could start in the slot perhaps or outside. And um, Quentin Lake has an opportunity. You know, he ended up starting that last game. He has an opportunity to, to be a starter as well. But um, you know, two legit corners. They had a familiar face in Darius Williams who could play inside as well if he needed to. And then Tredavious White, who's a solid corner. As long as he's healthy, that's the big if there, if he's healthy. And that safety, they obviously add some pieces throughout free agency in the draft. The big one, Cameron Curl, who actually talk, we'll talk a little bit more about in a little bit. Uh, but a really good fit, and they just upgrade. They're a young, rising safety uh, that has upside, I should say. So uh, they completely I don't want to say completely fixed it because uh, they, they definitely made it better they definitely made it better but Travis White needs to stay healthy but this group should should not be as you know anywhere near the issue it was in looking at that Lions game you know no free receptions with this group so that's huge and that could really elevate this team. Now, you could say they added guys like that. They revamped the secondary. But they did lose the best player, the best defensive player in football on Aaron Donald. And they could take a hit from that. And they, they could. So that's a big question. How are they post Aaron Donald? Uh, how are the players around him? Do they play just as good? You know, Aaron Donald would create for those players. He would get doubled, sometimes even triple teams. So, obviously... There's no guys, you know. There's no one there like Aaron Donald to kind of take away those double teams and create for the for his teammates. So that's kind of what people are maybe worried about a little bit. But they add. We talked about it. You know, three number two and number three on this list kind of go together. They added into the secondary. They added to the secondary, which is a big weakness. But even looking at the defensive line, you know, Kobe Turner broke out as a rookie last year, uh, and then same with Byron Young as well. And these guys are only going to get better. I know that's the big question, though. Like how their jobs could be harder with Aaron Donald not out there, but they're just going to become smarter players with time, with more experience. And then they add Braden Fisk on the inside. They add Jared Verse, so another weapon on the off the edge for Byron Young, so he gets some help there. Um, so they it, it, no Aaron Donald, but they have more. There's more of a variety of players, and they possibly can give you know different looks. Uh, not just in the secondary, but up front as well because of these different players that they have um, you know, on their team now. So it's going to be you know, two Florida State guys to add to the draft. So it's, it, you know, it's kind of a question, you know, before and after Aaron Donald, like how does it affect the players? How do they align? What, you know, what, how these young players, uh, how quickly do they progress? How do they use them right out the gate? So a lot of questions, but... Um, you know, also there's something, you know, something to really watch, like how, how different this team is and doesn't make them better or worse. So uh, excited to see, um, you know, all that on the defensive side of the ball. No Raheem Morris. So how, how are they, you know, after, you know, after him with him gone, at, you know, obviously in Atlanta, um, you know, so we'll see. But number one, uh, if, if Matt Stafford repeats how he played last year, I'd say watch out. And I, I actually, I was a huge Matt Stafford guy last year. I think everyone thought he played well and everyone was well, you know, well aware he played well, right? But I preached it, especially down the stretch. I think he was one of the more underrated players uh, from last year. I'm not going to really say for his career, but for last year, because I actually thought he played way better than people think. I thought he played... Better than the stats show as well, and the stats were pretty solid. Uh, I, I thought he he balled out. I did not expect that from him with all the injuries kind of piling up, and 
He's getting a little older. I mean, he played. I I actually thought he was a top ten player in football last year, just based off of last year alone. And maybe he should have got some. And not that I would have voted for him for MVP, but I thought maybe he should have been at least mentioned by somebody at some point. Because I actually thought he played he made that much of an impact. He played that well, and people do not realize it. Uh, and that and the offensive line was. Below average for most of the year. There was games where they were fine, of course, but in terms of pass protecting, you know, I thought he had his hands full at times. And um, you know, Cooper Cup didn't play every game, uh, obviously. And uh, Puka Nakua was great. He did have some drops. So the team did have some drops. So they kind of let Stafford down more than uh, I think what's being talked about. Uh, you know, and see Kyron Williams. I know it's it's part of the running game, not the passing game, but he went down at times, and he was fantastic last year. But I say if he is if he's able to repeat that, I think they're going to be even better because the offensive line should be a lot better. They add Jonah Jackson, but I think it should just get better by default as it is. Uh, Jackson played, you know, he stepped up. He played better than expected at left tackle, and he's back. Obviously, Steve Avila is going to take over at center. He's a guy that's got a lot of upside there. Um, you know, second year player. You know, so and that Dotson should only get better. Um, you know, hoping full. You know, from the start. You know, he plays every single game. So this offensive line should be a lot better. Teams are going to fear the running game more. How good it was last year. They add Blake Quorum in there now, uh, and I would think Cooper Cup could step up a little bit. Perhaps we'll talk about him a little bit more in a second. But yeah, if Stafford has that same play, like if he's healthy for most of the year, and or you know, kind of like last year, and. Uh, and he still has that arm talent, and he's still all there up here, which he should be. Um, I, I I think that's a, it's a they're a serious threat because I they add more on defense. We talked about that, but I think they're a serious threat. I think I yeah, it starts with the offensive line, you know. So we're kind of with number one here. We're kind of talking about the offensive line. I really think it's better. I really think it's better uh, than it it will be better than what it was last year. And I think I can go a long way here for the LA Rams. So that's kind of what I'm watching out for. Stafford blew my mind last year. Not that it was like that surprising, I guess, because we know the talent's in there. But uh, he, uh, people will say his best year was, you know, he went, uh, and I guess obviously winning the Super Bowl. But and I'm not a big stats guy. Like take away the stats, I'm, I'm sure they were fine. But just the impact and the throws he made in like big situations last year, the ball placement. I thought he played out of his mind. I was probably like the biggest Stafford fan. Uh, just based off his play last year. Um, so I'm excited to see what he's got this year. Uh, players to watch. I'm going to go Cameron Curl at number three. And uh, this is a big addition for them. Uh, and I think it's a tremendous fit if the Rams continue to run, which I believe they will, even post Raheem Morris, you know, with him being gone, I should say. Uh, but, yeah, Curl more of a split safety guy, uh, scheme guy, and that's what the Rams run a lot of, a lot of cover four over there. I'm gonna, I, I think they'll continue to do that. Maybe they'll start mixing in more. You know, they've been very low on their man coverage snaps. Maybe they add a little bit more on on that. We'll see. But Curl's such a good fit, and he's he's a guy that really the only thing he's missing is getting his hands in the ball a little bit more, right? He hasn't really done that in recent years, but he almost feels like a lockdown type of safety. He's, you know, smart, young, pretty much proven already, a lot of upside. He goes to a team. I think he fits this Ram def- defense more than he did uh, – the commander's defense, if I'm being honest, and I, I think his best football is ahead of him. So I, maybe he could add that playmaking ability, you know, this year with the Rams. So I think it's a tremendous fit, and the Rams haven't really been valuing the safety uh, position the last couple years, especially last year, that much. And they went ahead and did it a little bit, and they got really good value with him too. So it's not like they 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 spent a lot on him actually. Um, but I think it's going to help them a ton. So it's a player that's going to come in and really give them a boost. It's the main player that's going to give them a boost in the secondary. It's just a really good fit for them. Uh, number two, I'm going to go with Kobe Turner. I mean, he had a monster rookie season, much better than expected, fit right in, played very well, led the team in sacks, actually, which was huge. But now Aaron Donald is gone. And Aaron Donald, it's no secret, he creates for his teammates. He created for Kobe Turner. Like, Donald's going to take on double. We talked about sometimes triple teams and it's it, teams fear him they worry about him when watching film preparing for the game but when they are lining up the offense is lining up on the field quarterback the offense line they are watching him they're looking at what he is doing and how they could adjust um you know based on where he's at or what he does you know who he's uh, lined up against you know so they they try to uh 
teams will try to work around in or now. So he's out of there, and it's it's going to make Kobe Turner gotten more than just him. Uh, you know, their their job's tougher. So I want to see, but he's going to get better as a pro, like more experience, get smarter, and he's he could you know obviously young guys like this could add strength and um, you know speed, athleticism overall. Um, you know, just by being in the, in the league more and more, but or longer, but uh, yeah, it's it's really big for him to continue to play. Like, does he need you know nine sacks or whatever? Uh, you know, he doesn't need an X amount of sacks. I should say he doesn't. We're not we don't we're not gonna put those expectations on him. He just got to go out there and just continue to play well without Aaron Donald. Because if he doesn't, he takes a major step down because Donald's not out there. Then. Um, I, the D line is going to take a may, like a bigger hit than even everyone's already expecting. So I think there's a there's a little bit of pressure on him to continue to play pretty well uh, post rookie season here. The number one, I'm going to go Cooper Cup because this is one of the very best players in football the year they won the Super Bowl. Like one of the very very best players in all of football. And, and injuries have occurred since then. And when he's on the field, he's played well, but not one of the very best players in football, you know, and he, it'd be great if he gets, gets back there. Like Puka Nakua, as great as he was, like he shouldn't be the best receiver on this team. And as good as he could be, I think Cooper Cup should be the best receiver on this team. And I, you know, it's going to be big for him to, you know, if, cause I think this, this team's not really being talked about as a Super Bowl team. I think they, they have potential. Like they're, they're kind of a wild card, like a dark horse team to win the Super Bowl. But, I, you know, if Stafford plays like he did last year or around that range and they have that running game, the offensive line got better. Um, you know, there's we talked about this questions without Aaron Donald, but they've added more on the defense and especially in holes. But in what's something else like that really could get him like a serious, serious Super Bowl contender is if Cooper Cup uh, plays like Cooper Cup. I mean, that if he no one's really expecting it. Like if he goes out there and does like stays healthy and he balls out like that Cooper Cup, that guy, like it's realistically a serious contender. So he actually means a lot to this team. I mean, we knew that, but he, he has a say like how he plays. Like it has a say on how really how good the Rams could be. So that is why I list him as the number one player to watch for this year. We kind of touched on Matt Stafford. Like curious. It's not like one for this list though. Uh, even though I mentioned, like, yeah, if he plays like he did last year, it's a scary team. But we know he's going to play well. You know, it, it, there's, I don't think there's really a big range on where he could play. I mean, he could be injured. That's a tough part, too. I, a lot of people kind of expected him to miss a lot of games last year. Um, so I guess that is the big question with him. Games to watch. I'm usually not a huge week one guy because anything could happen. It, you really can't have a, you know, a ton of takeaways for the rest of the year based off week one. But... Man, it's another Stafford revenge game opportunity against the Lions, and it's just a team revenge game. They fell short in that playoff game. Uh, I, you know, the the Rams definitely want revenge. Other they kind of, they some calls went against them. I guess we'll put it that way. I really thought they had a good opportunity in the end uh, to win that game, and they just came up just short. But yeah, calls really weren't going in their favor. So here, here's a kind of a revenge game for them. It should be a should be a high scoring game. Should be a lot of fun in Detroit. Crowd's going to be crazy, so it's going to be a big game, obviously. I like the Packers game week five. I think the Packers are a serious uh, contender from the NFC. Um, You know, them and the Lions, two NFC North teams here. But week five is like about that time where teams kind of kick into gear. The season kind of kicks into gear. Like, enough with the sloppiness and, you know, teams really get going here. So that's going to be a heavyweight battle, I think, in week five. And you expect those teams to be healthy that early in the season. So, again, it should be a heavyweight battle. Um, So that should be a lot of fun. And the Eagles in week 12, they had some struggles with the Eagles last year. And that should be a uh, a battle for, you know, in the NFC. A lot could be on the line there for seeding and uh, just playoff implications. You're kind of starting to get that, that portion of the season. So kind of, yeah, from last year, this year, see where they're at, kind of compare those games after we see the outcome in this one. Um, so that, you know, I wasn't thrilled how they play with them last year. So uh, that one should be good as well. Some other good games, obviously the NFC West games will be big. Um, I think most people have the Rams in that second spot in that division, but if they can, uh, you know, if they can play with the Niners, you know, could they take that division? I definitely think there's a, there's a, certainly a opportunity there, a chance. Uh, and then some, Fans takes uh, Holden Franklin, uh, ex subscriber Rams. How will that front seven be without Donald? Yeah, we kind of touched on that. It's kind of a big question, but yeah, the thing is they added more. Like last year, Byron Young was kind of the lone edge rusher. It felt like 
And now they add Jared Verse, uh, you know, who who could be as good or better than Byron Young right away. And they're they're different styles too. So I like that. So um no Donald for Byron Young, but in terms of the same position, like get some more help and you actually have a duo in there. So things like that stand out. Why, you know, could they actually be be better because the collection of guys that they've added, uh, not just up front. Um, does Fisk go right into the starting role or is he a rotation guy? I think he's got to be a starter. Uh, they traded away a lot to go up and get him, and you know they don't have tremendous talent up there. I mean Turner can be, but you know for for you know in terms of other guys opposite of of Turner that uh, would start over Fisk. So I, I would imagine he has to be the starter. And do they have the best head coach in the NFL? You could definitely argue that. I think right now you got to put Andy Reid there, but. Um, definitely McVay, definitely one of the guys at the top there. Then Cameron Sullivan, impact of losing Donnelly. Yeah, we kind of touched on that. Does the overall secondary give them a new de- defensive identity? It's a great question. We kind of touched on it a little bit. But, yeah, how, how uh, we know it should be better. Uh, so does that alone give them a new identity? What's the best part of their defense? Uh, but does do they – are they different, like in a way? Like, do they? And I think that's what he kind of what Cam means there a little bit. Like, you know, do, do they have different looks or you know different coverages? Not just sticking with and cover four worked for them, but there was a lot of it. You know, a lot of zone, lack of man. So does just having better players out there in the secondary does that give you freedom to do more? So does it change your identity? You know, entirely. So we'll see. Stafford's health impact he has in the offense. Yeah, we kind of touched on that as well. Quorum and Kyron share uses roles. And yes, somebody kind of mentioned that as well. Uh, Soy sauce, you know, curious about the running back room. You see on the bottom right there. Uh, yeah, it's a good point. Something we didn't really touch on a ton. But yeah, Kyron Williams was actually one of the better running backs football last year. But he has some durability concerns. He's, uh, and it probably goes in with, yeah, he's a little undersized. But his play style is like is not like he's undersized. Like he he's not afraid to lower his shoulder and and, and uh, run into contact there, uh, more physical than he looks. So, but that kind of pops up with the durability concerns. So they add Corum. Uh, so how do they split that up? You know they you know they want to go Kyron because he's he's such a dynamic player and in a in a threat. Uh, but you do want to keep him healthy, fresh all year for like the bigger games. Corum should be pretty pro ready. Um, I wasn't super high on him just because I don't think he's going to last a long time in the NFL because he already has that mileage, but that's really not a take for like right now. Like he should be pretty solid, especially in this system right away. Um, and the other question was, you know, is he going to be able to break NFL tackles and break a ton of tackles in college? But, uh, yeah, so I'm curious. Uh, to me, Kyron Williams is far better. He's far better, but how do you split that up and how, um, yeah, how much of impact you get from Quorum is it is good or anywhere near as Kyron Williams there. So it's good questions that these guys have. And some takes. The Rams finish second in the division and make the playoffs. I think it's a realist, very realistic take. And then Stafford wins MVP. I gets a little more bold. But I, I thought he played, not that he was ever going to win or he was really going to be, not going to be my pick, but I thought he played like an MVP, like close enough. Like I, I, I think he played way better than people think last year. I, I thought he played out of his mind. Um, that that'd be pretty damn awesome if he won MVP. Like pretty damn impressive. If obviously if he won MVP at, at this point of his career, um, but it's possible. Uh, Gray Morrison, the secondary is the key for me. Honestly, I think the best scenario is Kinchins at free safety. Yeah, they drafted Kinchins too. He can play free early in his career. He played in the slot. So do they move him around a little bit? Um, he's a fantastic ball player. Just does he have the length and the speed range to to be an NFL free safety? But they do play a lot of split safety in that scheme. So it, you know, it makes his job a little bit easier. He doesn't have to cover full ground like he did. You know, in single high at Miami. Uh, curl at strong safety. Yeah, curl's gonna be out there. Quentin Lake. Sl- sl- Slot linebacker, yeah, kind of, we kind of touched on that. White Williams, Kobe Durant, outside. Um, but so far they have curl at free safety. Lake at strong, is trying to free out the depth at the nickel. Um, yeah, I, we mentioned Kinchins earlier in his career did actually play in the slot, but then he was much better at free safety, and that's kind of really what we know him as. Like his best moments on tape were that. But I wonder, I wonder if they're gonna maybe test him out in, in the slot. Or um, Durant was supposed to be a, a slot guy coming out. So, uh, but Darius Williams also could play there. So that I, I guess that kind of goes back in what we were talking about. Like not just the revamp, 
secondary, but the different looks you can give. You're not stuck with all these guys, and that's good in case of injury like Tredavis White have guys kind of learn different spots. Uh, so they actually could, the more and more we think about it, the more we talk about it here, they could be pretty versatile in that secondary. They can give much different looks and throw teams off, so pretty cool. Um, Levine X Fields, what to watch, how they balance their offensive weapons. Uh, yeah, and then uh, yeah, running back, receiver, all that. Hot take, Cooper Cup will re-emerge as the receiver. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking too. Kind of touched on it. Puka takes a step back. Um, yeah, it's a good point to bring up because you could see it. Like Puka was so out of his mind in terms of production. Well, in play as well, like after the catchability, everything. But uh, in terms of production, and most fans out there kind of pay attention to production that there's a chance that in terms of production, maybe he's a little lesser and a Cooper cup steps up and he plays more games. It's very realistic. And it's like one of those things where it's okay. Like that's fine. Like if Cooper cups playing great, that's definitely okay. Uh, but I could actually see Puka. I'm actually going to make the prediction. I like this prediction. I hope cup stays healthy. That's the only thing that he reemerges as receiver as the one, a receiver and Puka, I think will, have less production but I think he'll be a better player I think he'll be a smarter player I think his hands will be better he had some drops last year so he actually could catch the ball more consistently but have a little bit more or less stats this year it really depends on Cooper on, on Cooper Cup but I actually could see that uh, that actually be my prediction so a little bit diff- slightly different there I don't know if he d- actually takes a step back I- I'd say he takes a step back in, t- in terms of total yardage receiving yards then question who will step up on defense in absence of Aaron Donald yeah does Turner play as well does the rookie how good does the rookies play right away? how good do they play right away um so good questions and we kind of touched on um the uh the running backs a little bit yeah do they go two-headed committee yeah I mean if if you're just basing off a of skill and talent like you definitely don't want it to be a two like you definitely want to go like 80% at least Kyron Williams. And Corum could be really good right away. He was a big like home run hitting guy for Michigan, big important player on the best team in college football. Um, but the way Kyron Williams played last year and how he fits the NFL, like how they both fit the NFL uh, and, and, and that offense, like if you're just purely basing off skill, like you want Kyron, you don't want the two-headed monster. You want just Kyron Williams, him being a monster. But – uh, but because of the durability concerns, like you split a little bit more, I, I think that kind of makes some sense. But I think when you get to those more important games, that's when you kind of go more for, well, it depends on how Corm's playing. Of course, he can play great. Does he play better than Kyron Williams this year? Who knows? But I, I think it's it's Corum is there to split more earlier in the year, keep Kyron Williams healthy uh, because he seemed a little beat up even in the playoff game as well. Like he just because he kind of got worn down throughout the year, his insanely good season. So um, trying to keep him fresh. That's definitely what it's about there. So a um, lot of questions, a lot of things we can't wait to watch here when it comes to the L.A. Rams. They definitely could be a sneaky contender. Uh, but that'll wrap it up for this one. Again, we've done a bunch of teams already, and there's still a lot more to get to. We will get to every NFL team. Uh, check out our Twitter to kind of get involved. There's a link pinned in the comments. Uh, for that, as well as our sponsors, Liquid IV, code GOAT for 20% off. Check it out. It's going to do it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.